Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm a little irritated mm -hmm. with you. Dr. Mary and I are having a little disagreement this morning. But, you know, the show must go on. So I guess we'll work through that at a different point in time. And there's our dog. So this is going to be a banner daily dose. I can tell already. Hmm. Carry on. Do you feel free? So, good morning. Um, we're talking today about uh, power balance and power imbalance. And I think uh, what is kind of interesting about it, as we were talking through it the other day, is this idea that um, when Maz was drinking, on one hand, he had all of the power because um, his drinking dictated everything we did or mostly didn't do. You know, I wanted to go do yard work. He wouldn't come upstairs. I wanted to go for a bike ride. He wouldn't, go, whatever. So, so the power was really held by Maz and his addiction. On the other side of that, I held all the power because I was the sober person and I was the one um, trying to figure out how to navigate or trick around whatever was going on with him. And on top of that, I was also managing everything. So I was taking care of all of the house stuff and just occasionally getting some assistance from him. So I think there's something, I imagine, this is where I would love to hear your opinion, that both sides feel totally um, like we have no power. I felt like I had no power all the time because your addiction, even when I didn't know it was that, actually controlled everything. Uh, I think this is a really good thing to, to, to think of, to talk about and discuss because I think at the time, from my point of view, it was like Dana had just taken over and my opinion was worthless, but I didn't know I wasn't giving an opinion. Mm -hmm. in, in, I think, and I, we've been talking about this for, for quite a, well, at least three, well, for three and a half years. And I think what it actually is, is because I didn't realize I would kind of lost interest, I didn't understand why, because Dana was managing everything, to me it sounded like everything was a big deal and an emergency, and it just made me feel put on. Mm -hmm. So even though, and this is, this is kind of one of the tragedies of all of this, is that it could be just, a, you know, if you're trying to struggle with, with a spouse who's doing exactly this, it is a miscommunication. It's whose fault was it? It's probably, is it fair to say it's everyone's fault, but it's no one's fault? Yeah, I think it is. It's, it, this is, it, it is what happens. You have to, now, if you're the addict, take a breath and say, hey, you know, I know there's something wrong with me here. I'm not, maybe I'm not being put on. I'll listen if you can. And if you're the, person living with the addict this is going to be real tough but think you know what this my individual isn't in there my my, my significant other isn't really firing on all thrusters it's it seems like an unfair another unfair thing to suggest but if you actually want to have a conversation sometimes it's going to be yeah you know, take a step back see even ask them with a different tone and I'm not saying it's your responsibility but it might get through to them a little bit and then you might be able to start having a real conversation i mean dana said before she used to dangle a carrot at me i wouldn't suggest this because i didn't even realize she was doing it hey let's go for a bike ride and maybe we can end up somewhere where you can have a drink not maybe well but i i don't really remember that i'm not saying i i, it, I can guarantee you that's what happened that's probably not the best way to try anything like that but you know just try and get through with, a, with on, an, on another way of thinking. I mean, to, um, in, nowadays, it, it, it's something, it still surprises Dana that I, when I suggest doing something, she, she sometimes, really? Okay, and we just happily go off and do it. 
Yeah, because I had all of the power of doing all of the planning, taking care of all of the responsibility, um, managing all of the scheduling, <clears throat> all those kinds of things, all fell 100% to me. And that isn't fair. I mean, no, it's not. Uh, it, and, I'm sorry, yeah. but not only is it not fair, but it makes the spouse lose all respect yeah. for the other person because it's not a fair partnership. He was bringing in money, which was great, but I felt in many ways like I was still a single mom. It was just I had a much better income. And then I had this kind of lump in the basement that I had to deal with, who occasionally was great, but mostly was just belligerent and unpleasant. So uh, it's very hard to view your addict person as as anything equal, and as that that continues to sort of dis that disparity continues, then the power balance again continues to grow in your favor, and you resent it because it's not power you want. I didn't want to be in charge of everything. It just, if I wouldn't have done it, everything would have fallen apart. And it, there is also, um, from, the, from the other side of that, I mean, this is, this is actually, you got, I have to admit now, this is the addict's fault. Um, they're, they're not even aware of this, I, 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 I don't think, but they become more and more fit up because because there, there is you can tell I mean I could know there was something going on I even knew there was you know Dana was doing everything I I wasn't and it, it, it to me at the time it felt like you know I was being bossed and everything was you know oh we do do this do this do this you know you feel picked on but it, it isn't it's trying to get you to do something you, know, you before an addiction grabs hold of you you start off quite equally I mean that's how we got married in the first place but when when an, when this disease takes hold of you, you do lose a lot. And it's, a, it's very stressful on the other person. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is the, if you are listening to this and you think you have a, a, a problem with either drink or, or drugs or tragically this can happen sometimes both, if you can take a breath and say, yeah, this, this is another thing that, that's, that's wrong. And one of the first things you gotta do is just one of the first things that happened to me in rehab, as soon as I found out that this was actually my fault, my, rec my recovery really, really started to take off. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. I had to have my head, hand, my butt handed to me on a very big plate. And it's then very almost the next day, suddenly everything started falling into place. Yeah, a absolutely the next day, yeah. Because that was about week five, and you were gone for six and a half weeks. Yeah. I was yeah. still thinking like this was a problem I could fix myself. I still thought this wasn't this was actually my fault you know, entirely. I, I still no, thought... No, you I, thought it was not at all your fault. And, I, yeah. and in actuality, I'm just going to share this with you all. It was mostly his fault. I absolutely contributed to it, but the the fast fall and the addiction and the disease piece that didn't have anything to do with me. No, it did not. It did not at all. It, it, if you're watching this as the young, the, south, the spouse who isn't suffering from this disease, it, it's not your fault. Your significant other is actually truly power, powerless at the minute and it's, it's a scary thing to be in but it's no fun from the other side either. So if if you're trying to get this to still work it's just getting through a little step through to your to your significant other um it might it might help speed things up a bit yeah so if you are feeling today like you are um taking care of everything all of the responsibility is on your shoulders I want you to know that that is a fair feeling. Yes. And it's a true feeling because if left to the addict, at least from my experience, no bills would have been paid, no grass would have been mowed, no snow would have been shoveled, no um, dogs would have been walked, no garbage would have gone out, nothing. Nothing would have been taken care of. 
So uh, go ahead and feel like it's unfair because it is. But also remember that it's not your, it's not the spouse you married or are partnered with actively doing this to you. That's where this disease piece becomes so complicated because I have to remind myself in these conversations, you, Andrew, John, Michael, Patrick, Maz, Mary, didn't actively say to yourself, I don't care, she can take care of everything. You actively chose to drink, which caused you to fall into a disease, which caused you to not care about anything. And that's hard. It's hard to be okay with. Here's <coughs> his, 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 probably one of the best ways to sum this up is um, one of the leading causes of arguments and, and maybe even divorce is money. We'll talk about that. That's its, its own topic. It's a huge, It's a huge stress, but if you don't realize as the addict that if, if, if you feel like, why are they always having a go at me about money? You're the one who's consuming all the money. Or a lot of it. Or a lot of the money. The, the, the money that's disappearing is, is, you know, and it's good. It's, I think it's important to know that's down on, that's on, that's you. Well, let me just give you a, a teaser for that conversation. About three times a month, Maz would take out 40 or $60 from the ATM. And I would say to him, where is that money? And he would say to me, I have to buy sandwiches, Dana. Yeah, it was going to do. $240 of sandwiches? Those are unbelievable sandwiches. They, yeah. I want that sandwich. Yeah, they, they, they tasted remarkably like Jim Bean, yeah. actually. So we'll have that conversation another day. But um, I guess my takeaway for you today as the non-addict is go ahead and recognize that the power balance is imbalanced and that you are carrying the burden of keeping almost everything together. And if you have children, you're really carrying it. So go ahead and feel that. Um, and then see what you can do again today to try to get your person to recognize that she or he needs help so that that balance piece can be more equitable. You're actually actively now my equal partner, yeah. even when you irritate me. Yeah, well, yeah. You're my equal partner. I don't irritate you for long anyway, so that's it. I think we'll, we'll wrap up I, day, one, unless one, you have anything to one say. One more thing, just a, a, just a piece of advice for the addict. Um, just take a moment from, well, probably not thinking about yourself, to say, to think, you know what? This argument that we just had is my fault. Just take a minute to think that. What can I do today to help that? It might start a ball rolling. It's a, it's a small step. It's an ins insignificant small step that could lead to greatness if you want it. I wish I'd listened to my own advice, actually, because I, if I had thought about that at any point years ago, I would be looking forward to a chip that has more than four years written on the front of it. Yeah. All right, that's enough for today. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.